it's so crazy. I got that drone stuck in the tree. And did I tell you about that or no? No, hold on. Well, hold on. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Let's hit record. Oh, no, no. I've been recording. Been open. You've been I, recording? Been, oh, good. I've been good. recording. That's the open. It's, okay. <laughs> so, I yeah. got, so what had happened was. So, so I got that drone stuck in the tree. Hello and welcome to At The Speed of Light. My name is Ray Johnson. I'm a pastor at Anthem Church, and I'm going to be your host today. Our goal is to catch conversations as they happen. Conversations about who God is, what it's like to live in this upside down world, and what it means to live as Jesus lived and to love as Jesus loved. And for us to capture it all as it happens at the speed of light. Not all of our conversations are going to be off the cuff, and we want to make sure we're getting to the topics and questions that really matter to you. So please, if you have any suggestions, email us at anthemray at gmail.com. That's A-N-T-H-E-M-R-A-Y at gmail.com. Thanks again for tuning in, and please enjoy. Well, I uh, just want to welcome everyone here, and uh, you know, it's it's been a little bit, and it's just great to get together, uh, sit and chat, and kind of discuss, um, kind of where where uh, our new series is going. We're uh, starting a new series called called uh, Life as Anthem, um, and just wanted to hear from you guys a little bit on. Uh, you know, what uh, what life as anthem is for you, but also you know kind of just get some uh, uh, teasers, if you will, about uh, where we're going with this series. Yeah, I think uh, the uh, the first thing uh, that I was talking with somebody uh, yesterday about um, the sermon, you know, our, our teaching from Sunday, and uh, I think one of the things that that one of the things that they were had never you know been uh, had understood it in a, a new way this time has been the first part was understanding that jesus the, the idea of the uh, where the blessings come from you know that uh jesus is looking at a group of people and saying this is what my kingdom is made up of of peoples whose hearts are open in this way or whose lives are open in this way uh and uh you know, this person said, you know, I've been, I was raised Catholic and they'd been, they'd been a Christian, you know, I don't know, lo- longer than I've been alive. Uh, and uh, like, you know, I've, I've sat in Bible studies with, with the Beatitudes. And um, I think uh, something that one of the misconceptions that was prevalent seems to be this idea of these are uh, a religious ladder that we need to take or steps that we need to be, you know, we need to be, you know, uh, poor in spirit and then we will mourn and uh, that sort of thing and for this person it was just very uh, I was blessed to, to hear that it was very freeing for them and eye-opening to go to think of who who Jesus is looking out to and saying these are what these are the groups of people who my kingdom is made up of and it has nothing to do with uh, your politics or your financial status where your your race your your gender your uh ethnicity the racial bias that you have the the regional bias that you have right because when all these people are coming from all these different areas judea the 10 towns which is filled with gentiles uh galilee which is filled with uh you know gentiles and, and jewish people like they span financial classes they're mostly the aha marets they're mostly these people of the land uh and and the what, what brings them all together it's that they are in this position where their heart is open to actually seeing God, God's restoration here through God's ways. And for them, they were like, not only like it was, it, uh, it spoke to them asking the question of man, what have I always thought church should look like or who the church should be filled with or who the kingdom is filled with, you know? Uh, and here Jesus is speaking out and saying, my kingdom is filled up with, with groups such as these, as, as these. 
That's really good. Yeah. I think also like with that um, latter kind of misconception, it's just, we always kind of try to think about scripture in a linear fashion that like A plus B equals C kind of thing, or this is a list or it's at least formatted in a list in my Bible. So what it means is that these are the steps you need to take to get up to the point where you need to go. And it's not like, you know, more, it's more of a manifesto style kind of thing or a life, uh, I don't know, reflection kind of uh, like how the life in the kingdom is supposed to look like. It's not steps to take, you know, to get to some holy place. Yeah. Right. It's this like yeah. journey that we like progressively take more in, right? Like we we just, uh, yeah, we we live this out more and more as we walk this journey. Uh, yeah. And I feel like that's so important to also realize is that these people that Jesus is talking to, none of them understand who he is or what he's come to do. He's telling them, hey, I've come to do mm-hmm. everything that you want me to do. But he's not doing. He doesn't end up doing it in any of the ways in which, like, they had expected or thought God was going to do so. Yeah. And so the fact that he's talking to people and saying, "You already are this," despite the fact you don't have this all figured out, but it's like because your heart is turned this way, you're going to end up in in like down the road. Like, just keep journeying with me. We're going to end up in this place together, and it's all oh, it's okay. Relax. You already are. <laughs> you already are this. Yeah. Just relax. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not like I, it's a breath of fresh air to be like, oh, you mean I don't have to be more, or I'm not searching to be more meek? How do I, how do I figure out to be more meek? How do I figure out? Why aren't out you mourning, be, Ray? Right, Mourn. Right. How, how do we figure out these things so I can get these blessings? Mm-hmm. It's more so of laying the foundation of like, no, this is what my kingdom is made up, up of. And hey, guess what? Like, you're part of that because you're in each one of those kind of um, uh, blessings or beatitudes that we see in the, the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. yeah. And when he's talking about these different groups of people, um, you know, some of the stuff that we, that, that one of the things I feel like we miss out on, and this is the, this Western mindset, the individualism that, that we find in this, where we kind of get mm-hmm. some of these misconceptions come out of a lot of that mindset. Um is that uh, we, I don't want to say we over-spiritualize them. That's not what I mean. Uh, mm-hmm. What I mean is there is another level when we put ourselves in, in this uh, specific space with Jesus talking to these people. They are, when Jesus is talking to them, they are, are he's talking about physical, re- like their expectation is this restoration happening in their lives here and now, a political restoration a restoration of the religious uh, the industrial religious complex which includes all the political uh, financial restoration like mm-hmm. god's rule here on earth here and now and so when mm-hmm. like we're going to go into this in uh, like two weeks from now how he just critiques the total religious complex that you know mm-hmm. that exists which he agrees mostly with in, a, in some of at least in the pharisaical denomination man he agrees mostly with with a lot of their stuff uh, and he's like, yeah. yeah, you guys are on the right path, but we're, we're, we're moving past this now, you know, we're going out, out here. Um, yeah. And, uh, and it's, so he, there is this political conversation that he's having with those people right then and there in the situations that are happening in their lives. He's not a wise teacher, just spitting out riddles uh, or wise sayings that you have to figure out in from the mountainside. We may have to figure them out, because we're not 2000 year old Palestinian Jews, mm-hmm. you know? So, but when he's talking to them, they're not going like, Oh, what does he mean by, by the mourners? No, he, they know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. And, and they're talking about stuff here and now, not some future time of, uh, you know? And so they're, so I say that because I feel like when we read this, the initial thing that we all, that we read is often like, what does this mean to me or how does this affect my life now? Or uh, how does this mean for me spiritually rather than yeah. what does it mean for me physically here now? Mm-hmm. What does it mean for my uh, physical body, the physical life here? What does it mean for 
um, my uh, my heart or my mind. And these people, I don't think are ever, they're not hearing this as, oh, good. Like, I'm going to get to go to heaven. They're not talking, like, they're not hearing that at all. They're hearing Jesus and they're going, yes, we are here for God's rule here and now. But but physically, like this physical restoration. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I think you end up getting a, like a good look at, yeah, what what Jesus is setting out for his people to be like. I mean, that's an ultimate thing, you know. Um, different. I like how different translate. My favorite translation of the Beatitudes is um, Eugene Peterson's uh, from the Message, and I feel like it's, uh, it just oh. hits. No, like, it's a paraphrase. First off, it's a yeah. paraphrase, sir, and yes. not a translation. So. Sorry, the Eugene Peterson paraphrase. I know. Maybe paraphrase. That is. A, I I say that mockingly, just because even though okay. there's <laughs> brothers know. and sisters in the streams of Christianity that have big problems yeah. with. I know with, uh, with I that, know. but I, I think it, it sets the tone of the, the whole uh, passage to, to even la- lead later on just in general. Um, I'm just talking about the Beatitudes in general, just because it's, it's literally for us to recognize like, you know, <laughs> where, where God is working right now. He's working amongst the persecuted. He's working amongst those who are meek. Those, you know, those who have power and are using it uh, for, for good. He's working amongst those who want to see justice uh, called out he, you know, or, or, or yeah, accomplished. He's working amongst those uh, people who are humble. You know, like that's where you're seeing God, uh, God's, the manif- manifestation of his kingdom happening in these areas. And it's so counterintuitive to everything that, especially growing up in the Western church of what we do, like, oh, God shows up in the powerful people and the leaders and the ones who are, you know, overstretching, you know, who are using their power to uh, protect us or save us or something like that, you know, you know, it goes on and on like that. So um, yeah, or, you know, people who, uh, you know, are, you know, you know, who are, uh, you know, I guess, you know, who, who do all the right things, you know, or who are rich, like God blesses them, you know, so, so many, so many things like that. That's where we think God shows up or we're told God shows up. And it's, 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 I mean, it's exactly like it was in Jesus's day today because humanity hasn't changed, you know, <laughs> like it's the, the same thing. So. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, Ray, uh, do, when we go church shopping, do we look for people who are in chapter four and reveal <laughs> chapter five, right? Or, or you know what I mean? And the people in chapter four, just to just to remind us of where, where we all are at. Jesus, when he's sitting on the mountainside, he says uh, before he gets there, he went through the whole of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news, healing every diseases and illness among people. So people bring him from all over, right? Large crowds follow him from Galilee, the 10 towns, Jerusalem, Judea, beyond the Jordan. They brought to him people with various kinds of diseases and ailments, just various kinds, various kinds of ailments. <laughs> you yeah, know? Various kinds. Various kinds. Yeah. Demon possessed people, epileptics, uh, paralytics. Uh, these are people who are, who are specifically not uh, the blessed in society. They're not blessed. Yeah. Why? Because of their situation. Yeah. So they fact, can't like, be blessed at, by God. Why? Because like, of their situation. At, yeah, looked at as like that, whatever is whatever is hampering them, whatever is their disease, whatever is their uh, mental illness, that is all sin that was that was piled on because of your sin that you aren't being forgiven for or not asking for forgiveness from, or that piled on from your parents. Like mm-hmm. so you are the less than, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so Jesus looks at, so these are the people he's gathered with. These are the people who are not allowed in synagogues or, or, or I'm sorry, not synagogues, but aren't allowed to come and sacrifice to the temple because they don't have the money. They're the aha marats. They don't have the mm-hmm. money to become clean so they can then yeah. become clean before God, you know? Uh, and he looks out at them and he says, all right, everybody here whose heart is, looks like this. If you're, if you are poor in spirit, if you're, which is, you know, he's referencing Isaiah 61 and 66 in there, but he's talking about people 
who are so desperate for God's rule and reign, their poor in spirit is they're at the end of their rope because they realize there's nothing they can physically do any longer to bring God's reign here on earth. And they're at the end of their rope and only God can come in and bring their, their, the, his reign here. If you are at the end of your rope because you look out at the world and you see how much it sucks and you are desperate for God to restore it, guess what? My kingdom is made up of people such as you. Yeah. It, there's no gender. There's yeah. no, there's no uh, uh, regional bias. There's no cultural bias. There's no ethnicity. Uh, yeah. There's no age. Yeah. There, there's nothing. It is, if you, if you are at this place, my kingdom is made up of such as you. And you're already blessed. And that's the, that's the, I mean, there's this other part that, I mean, about the blessing that we can tap into if we want to, Ray. Um, I don't even know where I, I got, sorry, I get distracted. There's so much. No, no, no. About. I there's get so, so distracted much. with this stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep us on track, well, brother. And, Keep me on track. Cause I'm just going to go well, off on all these, on all the, all, all, all the, all these rabbit trails, all the, man. All the yeah, rabbit yeah. trails, all the weed. Well, and so uh, this past week, you went over the Beatitudes, what they mean to us, what they mean for us as a church, what they mean for us as a people. Um, <clears throat> but there's still some, as we go down that list, as we go down these uh, the, these Beatitudes, there's still some that are like, what does that even, what does that even mean? Yeah, like, tell me. What? So, well, so you just, you just hit one, um, you know, what it means to be poor in spirit. Like, what mm -hmm. does that mean? That's a good one. Um, Another one is like um, to hunger and thirst for righteousness, right? But there are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. What what is hunger and thirst for righteousness? Because I I think that's also one of those pieces where um, people can point out and go, no, 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 like all the judgment that I throw on others, all the all the 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 like you you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, this is where I can come back and go, no, look, I'm blessed because. I hunger and thirst for this righteousness. Uh, and so then I can condemn you for what you're doing that I feel is sinful or not, not good. Right. Oh man. It's beautiful. I love that. Don't you love it when we can, what does the Bible mean to me? Right. Yeah. And, and, and this, and, and guys, like if this is confusing, it's okay mm -hmm. that it's confusing. Yeah. This is a 2000 year old letter written to Jewish people. Who were yeah. who who were well aware of all these verses, okay? So in Luke, when Luke records a sermon on the plane, he adds a bunch of woes mm -hmm. because he's talking to a bunch of he's talking to a Gentile, and if you're Jewish, you're so aware of what Jesus is talking about here the the inherent um, critique on the opposite because of the right. because of the scriptures that he, that he's referencing. Luke is like, oh. I've got to add the I've got to add the critique because my yeah. my homie you know he doesn't get it because he doesn't he doesn't have all these Hebrew scriptures memorized you know they're not oh, coming yeah. to town here. So when Jesus says blessings on you know God's blessing is on people mm -hmm. whose hunger and thirst for God's justice. All right, that with that one we'll just look at that one in particular. Yeah. Um, it is in it goes along with the meek. Okay, so these are like think of them as A B uh uh blessings okay so the meek goes along with those who hunger and thirst for righteousness uh they mm -hmm. come we can look up i mean um uh psalm 37 and psalm 107 all right Th this is where this comes from and the, both of those psalms have to deal with israel repossessing the promised land and the repossession of the promised land is um the imagery for God's restoration of his, of, of him writing the world. Okay. For Israel, uh, him turning this world right side up meant the temple and that whole oppressive system being done away with, uh, and, and fixed. Uh, and it meant that Israel was going to rule over their, the promised land, uh, not the whole earth, uh, it, with what he's referencing here. Okay. Just specifically what he's referencing here. Uh, so for those who hunger and thirst for God's, uh, for God's justice, uh, he is specifically talking towards people who are hunger and thirsting for God to restore his kingdom here on is to, to Israel, right? He's not, you again, he's using that imagery because that's who he's talking to. But what he's saying is for those of you who hunger and thirst for justice here on earth to look like as it does here in heaven, 
and, and like the kingdom is here guess what like you're going to be satisfied like you are going to be filled the kingdom is here the kingdom is available now that sort of justice is available now that sort of of life of the age is available here and now so he just references all these other verses like um the merciful this is one of jesus favorite passages um hosea 6 and it's just mm -hmm. filled with uh just so i mean just cuts right to the heart of so many things you'll see a reference uh, josiah josiah uh jesus <laughs> jesus references hosea <laughs> a bunch when he says i need you to understand what it means that i desire your mercy and not your sacrifice which it, hosea is critiquing uh, the people that would live their lives, you know, Sunday through Friday afternoon, and then uh, come in for Shabbat on Friday night uh, and call it all good. Uh, and and uh, Hosea is like, listen, God ain't putting up with that. God desires your actual like mercy, not just your Sunday morning content or mm -hmm. your uh, Bible yeah. study attendance. Like that's what Jesus is saying there. So like, He's critiquing the whole thing when he's talking about the pure at heart that comes out of Psalm 24. And again, outside of the Hebrew scriptures, these can kind of be really difficult to understand. But Psalm 24 is all about people returning, climbing the hill to Jerusalem, which is what they would do when they were coming like to Passover into these festivals. And they would climb these hills and they would sing these songs. And the, hope, and the hope was like these, um, it was reminding them, hey, there will be a time when we all climb this hill up to Zion again, and we will sing these songs again, and God's presence will be back here at the temple, and God's rightful world will be restored here on earth. Like, for those of you people who are pure in heart, right, because that's what you seek then, you will be called God, you, uh, you, you will see God. And when he says you will see God, what he's saying is, you will see God's restoration of, of, of Psalm 24, everything that you've been looking for in Psalm 24, you're going to see it. That's what he's saying. And he's going to go on to say, and we're not, we're not there yet because, uh, listen, I gave one sermon on 12 verses. All right. Crazy. You're lucky. That, that's, this a, ain't that's quite a, a 12. Lot. You're lucky to say that 12, like just this alone, ain't 12 right. sermons alone. Yeah. But we will get to the point where Jesus is calling out all these things that people are hoping for in the restoration of Israel, right? And he's going to say, everything you're hoping for is happening here now in me. And it's going to be happening in, in and through you. Anybody who follows me, it's happening here and now through me. Like, that's what he, that, that's what he ends up saying. Um, so <sighs> it's just very exciting. <laughs> I just it love it. It's, it's so compelling <laughs> to me. Because it speaks so much to, to this day, you know, like yeah. when we go and pick out churches, are we looking at a church that is filled with the people that I want it to be filled with mm -hmm. th that look like the way I want them to look, you know, that sound like the way I want them to sound. Are they, they young enough for me, old enough for me, cool enough for me, sing enough hymns for me, play enough this for me, do, do whatever it is, have enough programs for me, or are they made up with the people of chapter four who are just so des who are so discontent with the religion, with what, with what any of this stuff has to offer that they're like, I'm out. And Jesus is like, great. If you are out because you want to see God actually work, I'm here for it. Here we are. Let's, let's go. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's so many other, yeah, there are so many op options that, well, we live just in a consumer based culture and that consumer based culture has infected. I'll say infected. Yeah. It has infected the church. And it is about where can I find the proper spiritual products and services that fit my needs in order to, you know, accomplish whatever uh, I, you know, I want to accomplish with my life. Um, and it comes completely about that instead of being about uh, God's kingdom. And, and you can, we, I don't want, we don't have to get into like pointing fingers about why that is or what, what has happened to, to get that way. But I think it's just, than the nature of the beast that we're part of. There's always whatever kingdom and uh, no, the mean, church just, finds itself in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but just to say, I mean, yeah. Paul, I mean, Paul in the first century, right? I mean, we were yeah. just in first Corinthians saying he's like, some of you all are like, I got baptized by this dude and I got baptized by this guy. And Paul's like, listen, I was, I was hanging out with Jesus for years in the desert. All right. You want to know yeah. how weird that is? Nobody even brings that up. Nobody even talks about it. We right. just 
we just go, uh, I don't know what to deal with that. So we're just going to ignore that completely. Uh, but it was happening yeah. in the first sentence, the churches that Paul plants, he's there for 18 months, yeah. a year and a half. He leaves and he comes back and yeah. he's like, well, uh, uh, look at that. Paul's pounding the desk. No. <laughs> so excited with this stuff. <laughs> but like that sort of consumerism isn't unique to us in the West. Right. Yeah. It, it is, it is the, it is the nature of judgment. It's the nature of us reaching for stuff that yeah. God never intended us to even have the power to have, you know, it's a lightsaber yeah. of yeah. judgment. All of a sudden you don't have an arm. Yeah. Well, and right. it's just, right. it's just like, yeah. <laughs> and just our modern day equivalent of it is like, I have these certain like authors that I really like and I collect their books and I put them on my shelf. And you know, whatever. hey, listen, we all should yeah. read NT yeah. Wright. What's your problem? <laughs> if you don't have the full NT Wright collection, do you even Christian number one? Yeah, do right. You even <laughs> Christian, bro. Oh, yeah. Do you even theology? Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> you even theology? If you're not just it's John well, Piper I mean, and NT Wright, just right next to each other. Right next oh, to each other. Just they battling feel so... it out right on the book. <laughs> yeah. So Over warm. Nothing. Man, this has nothing to do with this another rabbit trail. But I remember there was there this was years ago. I'm reading this book. Yeah. I'm brand new in the seminary. Okay. Not, not mm. so long ago. It's not years ago. Quiet, Ray. This <laughs> many, was, many moons ago. This was a, this was months like, ago. Okay. Months. Uh, and, uh, and mm. so I'm reading this book on this church uh, camping trip. It's like, yeah, church camping trip. The first church that brought us up mm. here. I'm reading this book on justification. And one of the elders comes oh, yes. up to me and he's like, ah, oh, justification. Like, what's that about? And I'm like, Oh, well, N.T. Wright is talking about justification and John Piper thinks of justification this way. And so I go on for like five or seven minutes, not understand. I mean, talking about anything I, I don't understand. Right. And he looks at me, he's like, oh, all right. And then like leaves and he's like, and then, and I never learned that lesson until year, until some months later, some months later, which some was, months later. if you all are going to write a couple of books about justification, arguing with one another. I don't necessarily, I don't have to watch that. I don't have to read that. I don't have to waste my time with that. <laughs> I did not know that then, but I know that now. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so, it's just also recognizing there's so many different avenues of thought that you can just, uh, you know, I had, I had talk, was talking with somebody and they were showing me a book and they were like, I agree with like, everything's for like one paragraph in this book and it's so great like you should read it too and i was thinking i read books where i disagree with like more than half the stuff and like i think there's like good stuff in it too and i just like like, and I, like I that remember means, reading yeah. uh not to, yeah there was uh it was a uh, new jim crow it took me three times to read it before i finally uh began to it's process hard. some of those things, you know? Uh, and it was because yeah. all of it was just so different for me. Um, but it was, yeah. Yeah, I remember reading it the first time and going, I don't agree with this really at all outside of, I think we headed to the right place maybe, you know? Uh, yeah. So anyways, another rabbit trail. Well, Ray, I mean, keep yeah. us on it's, track, Ray. It, right. So to, to pull us back in and look at some of these other, um, like, what does that mean? Um, uh, salt of the earth. Oh, we like, can't get there but, yet. No, that's but, that's Sunday. I, I mean, oh, we get salt a little of the teaser? earth. Just wait. Are we going to do a podcast after each series? Oh, each we, series? we could. We could. I, mean, hey, I know we deal. could. <laughs> here's okay. And here's salt the thing: of, is like the Sermon on the Mount is it's so. I, I mean, when I when I imagine it in my head, right? Because as we're reading or whatever, like for me, I'm I'm all about imagery and scene and. It's like at the end, he had to have dropped a mic. I, I'm just saying for me, Jesus was like, I'm just, I'm just spitting all these bars of everything that the kingdom is. And, uh, and then like, it is so uh, filled with so much information. There's so much meat on each one of those bones that uh, I, you could do a podcast. You could do a series oh, about each little segment of, the Sermon on the Mount. It's it's how it's so what we're doing. Yeah, it's exactly what we're doing. So we're doing. <laughs> uh, the, the, in fact, uh, I was complaining to the elders last night about uh, some some weeks I had to cut off because uh, I was like, ah, I wanted three weeks for this, and you know, I just don't have time. He said, what, Why? <laughs> like, I, I don't know. <laughs> they said, Listen, I was literally told 
listen, if I have to hear you say, I don't have time to talk about this because you're going 45 minutes, fine. But if it's because you don't have another <laughs> week, just put another week in. I'd rather you talk about it. I was like, okay, yeah, well, yeah. now that I have permission. Yeah. <laughs> Our 72 week series on the Sermon oh, on the Mount. No, no, no just on the, the Beatitudes, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah, so the so the salt of the earth is going to be next. We're I'm talking about it this Sunday. All right. So uh if you're listening to this now before Sunday, uh I'll be talking about salt of the earth this Sunday. And we'll be talking about light of the world this Sunday. And here's what it has nothing to do with sharing your faith. It has zero things to do wait, with sharing your faith. Wait, light of anyway, the world. Are are you sure? I'm positive. That it has nothing to do with you sharing your faith. Now, Jesus wants us to share our faith. Jesus wants us to do so. Um, but he's not talking about that at all here. Jesus will, will commend peacemaking. He will commend um, people who are, uh, who, who are meek. What I'm looking at the other areas over here. He will commend uh, people who are pure in heart and people who are merciful. All those things he will commend. Guess what he's not doing? He's not commending them in the Beatitudes. He's not telling us we should be that way. That's not what he's saying. He's looking at groups of people and he says, oh, your status, your heart is turned towards the Lord because of how, because of the, the, the suck that you either live in, A, you've experienced, B, or that you look around and see, and you're so desperate for God to come and do something that you're actually like teachable. You're actually moldable. Excellent. My kingdom is made up of you. He's not, he's not commending us to do any of these things. He will do that elsewhere. But he's just not doing that here. And mm -hmm. it, so like, uh, it seems, it's not that I'm, I'm not like splitting hairs, but he's not talking about us making disciples with salt and, and earth or so, salt and light. And so as somebody put it, if you're somebody put it, uh, if your youth group was called salt and light, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what this is about. <laughs> like if you're, you, you know, banned. <laughs> What, you know that's not what this is about uh so we'll talk about salt on sunday and it is about i mean it's it's, not, it's beautiful it's amazing but it's just not about sharing your faith this is for us i think that the one of the one of the things i wanted one of one of the biggest questions for me is when we look at success do, you know are we hitting our three values are we hitting the talent basin communion and table and baptism right are we serving are we valuing reconciliation and forgiveness? And are we living that out? Uh, and are we uh, living out our baptism? Is Jesus first among all things in our lives, right? Are we work? Are we journeying towards those things? Um, but is our church made up of the kingdom? And and Matthew's, and when you talk about Jesus dropping the mic, he does so here, but he doesn't do it by dropping the mic. He starts off with the flurry or the, 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 the flourish of uh of healing a bunch of people who are what who are the aha marets who are the discarded who have sought help from the religious system and has been told the religious system is not for you why because you're an aha maret because you're of the land because you're poor because you're sick because you've been traumatized and if it was for you those stuff wouldn't have happened to you like that that's that's the deal right you would if you're, you're poor you're poor because you're lazy because you won't work that's why you're poor God's blessing would be on you if you were rich and you would be rich yeah. if you were, if you weren't so lazy, but God, you know, you know what I mean? Like, like that, that's literal teaching that we see here today, but that, that's right. teaching us stuff back then. And so Jesus yeah. starts healing all of them. Right. He's like, all right, now let, let, let's go and let, let's go and hang out. And he teaches. And then in chapters eight and nine, which is a continuation of the sermon on the Mount, it, it's the sandwich, right? The, the chapter four is the bread and chapter eight, and nine is a sandwich. And it helps us interpret the meat in the middle. And eight and nine is him dropping the mic. And guess what he does? He heals a bunch of people. He just starts healing a bunch of aha marets all over the place. Oh, this Gentile who's, who's oppressing yeah. people, his servant is sick. Ah, oh, let's go heal him. Why? Because his heart is open to the kingdom of God. Because despite the fact he's a Roman centurion, he treats everybody out of love and respect. And the other Jewish pastors are coming to Jesus and speaking out towards him. So Jesus drops the mic and he's like, you want to know what my kingdom is made up of? Here's what it is. People like this Roman centurion who, who is merciful and who hungers for God's righteousness, even though he doesn't know it, even though he doesn't understand it from a, from a theological perspective. 
So he drops the mic by healing a bunch of people and, and feeding people and going, this is what my kingdom is made up of. So if our kingdom is made up of, of, of more BMWs than it is bus transit tickets, I'm just, I'm just asking the question because there are BMWs in this crowd yeah. and there's BMWs in, in, in the, in Jesus's followers. Of course there are, but if it's not good news to the people who the culture is oppressing and if, and if our kingdom is not made up of, of people who are struggling in every way because they've been cast out by the religious culture or by the church culture or by the, the, the culture culture, is it the kingdom? Because Jesus seems to say, my kingdom is made up of this. So if you want to come hang out with this, great. But if you're not interested, no problem. We'll be here waiting for you when you come. So, <clears throat> so does that mean also that those that were there, not because they, they believed Jesus was God, not because they were following because, you know, oh, he said, follow me. So I'm, I'm going to, listen to what God said. I'm going to listen to what this rabbi said, and I'm going to follow him. But <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm following this crowd and to listen to the sermon or to listen to this, this man speak because uh, Jim over here, he, he had, you know, he had a skin disease and he was healed. So, I mean, I want me some of that. I don't know what he's about. I don't know what, what's going on, but I know he had leprosy and now he doesn't. I know he was blind and now he isn't. I know, so, I, you know, I have a yeah. shriveled hand. Yeah. Can yeah. I be healed? Exactly. Yeah. I would I would also think that it's also just because of what he ends up offering to people. I mean, they're seeing these miraculous signs and obviously that's going to draw a crowd. But I think ultimately who he's performing these signs two is the the important thing you know it's like it's it's not he didn't go to the temple and like all the sadducees and pharisees and the the council he went to the alhamarets he went to the <laughs> the poor he went to the the people who are the day laborers the worker you know so be um, so be a yeah. so be be a sadducee okay here, yeah. here we go okay all right so be a, <laughs> be sadducee. a sadducee oh that's great that needs to be a teacher you're a sadducee <laughs> And how do you know Jesus isn't the Messiah? Well, because your job is to know who the Messiah is. And so you he would be the Messiah because, well, you would know he's the Messiah. Your job, you know he's the Messiah because you're telling people he's the Messiah. Yeah. But 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 he's not, but right. And or now or now you're a Pharisee and you yeah. hear Jesus, and, and Jesus is like, hey, he sounds a lot like me. Like he sounds a lot like he believes the stuff I believe in. Yeah. And then he goes on in and uh, when we get to oh man. When we get to uh, what is it? it's uh, when we get to do not suppose I came to destroy the law of the prophets and that your Ooh. your righteousness has to be superior to the, to the scribes of the Pharisees. He's he, he is he's just like he, he's looking out and going. It's just By the way, fired. everything they're doing, uh, they've got it wrong too. <laughs> like they're not right either. So now you're a Pharisee and you're like I'm following this guy because he's doing signs, and he agrees with with the, the theology that I agree with. And all of a sudden, he's talking to people and telling and saying that they're blessed. And your theology says they're not blessed. But you see him doing signs. So can you see, like, your heart? Like, everything you've been taught has been this, but you're seeing it here. And, yeah. and then he goes, by the way, uh, everybody who, it doesn't matter whether you're uh, Jewish, male, or rich, and have a son, married and have a son. Because that's how you would know that you were blessed by God. Those were literal ways to know. No, 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 no. Your, your status is pointed towards God in a special way. Why? Because your heart is turned open to him. Why? Because you realize how bad everything is and you want God's actual rule here on earth. You looked at the religious system. They've had nothing to offer you because you're here with me on a mountainside with a peasant rabbi who, who, who is not good looking because Isaiah tells us there is nothing about him that we will want to be about. So he's not tall. Because we know Saul was tall, we know Saul had flowing locks of hair, so it would not be surprised. It would not surprise me if Jesus had ma male pattern baldness. And frankly, men with less hair I find more physically attractive than other men, especially those who choose <laughs> to shave their head. But I think that's in the Bible there what? too. Somewhere. Absolutely. Oh yeah. yeah. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. Right. you're right. But uh, th that's deep, and we'll get to that in week five of the Sermon on the right. Mount. <laughs> um. Right. 
but uh but G, but so now you're you're following him and he's about to say hey everything that that uh that you've been going for it's wrong it's i'm fulfilling everything here like the, the i like i uh just feel for those people that had their like what are you supposed to do you know how do you like uh, how, how do you reconcile that i i uh i i think i i feel for them uh, in the same way that like I've had peeps come up and talk to me about man, man I've never heard this before how have I been a Christian for this long I've never I've, I've never heard it taught that way well, well there's a lot of reasons why we have more information now than we used to have <laughs> there's a lot yes. more archaeology now like we know more now like that's why you know it's not that any yeah. of that was you know done necessarily out of like some bad you know like purpose you know necessarily we just didn't know it a, 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 as much as we know now you know, and then yeah. we'll know later and hopefully 10 years from now, we'll be able to talk about the Beatitudes in an in a even deeper way because we'll understand more stuff then, you know. Yeah, yeah. But we'll totally. get to the, well, but the the yeah, the, the people that he's talking to in the crowds and, and all that. Oh, the sec- uh, I got to get to this. How long? I don't even know how long we've been going, but I, I got to get to this part. So, Raymond, please ask me, what do I need to get to? <laughs> what? Hey, hey, Paul. Uh, this Great. Just what? In. Yes, this is just in. <laughs> What do you need to get to? <laughs> I know I haven't I haven't spoken much this podcast yet. Um, so the thing that absolutely wrecked me, I just kind of want to get into detail with this. Uh, that wrecked me was uh, when Jesus. I'm practicing this, you know, talking as I call it. I told I've always told the kids I'm practicing talking. That's just was it easy when Josiah asked me, "What are you doing? Why are you walking around talking to yourself?" <sighs> You know, when he was a, a <laughs> kid, I'm like, I'm practicing talking. You should practice talking too. <laughs> okay. Cause your, your R's and S's don't sound like the way they should practice talking. Um, but uh, so I'm practicing talking and uh, I, I just hear Jesus look at me and be like, would you just listen to the words that you're saying? Right. And those words are these, the people that are sitting there, they're not blessed because their situation is great. Like their situation yep. sucks. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's bad, right? They, they, and they don't have any way to get out of it or it's really hard on the daily for them. And God saying to them, your status is now considered blessed. Mm-hmm. Be, not because your situation is any better than I want it to be but because you are now turned towards me in a way that others are not because of your situation, you are now called blessed because of your situation and where you where where like, I'm, I don't even know if this is the best part to come out of it, but like where, where it leads your heart towards, hmm. towards God's righteousness and God's justice. So for me, as someone who sits with anxiety, who sits with uh, PTSD or sorry, complex PTSD, those who sit, you know, it's, sit in the trauma of, 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 uh, you know, things not, not going the way they were supposed to go, <laughs> you know, when I was younger, uh, like and, and dealing with that stuff on, on the regular basis or talking with our brothers and sisters. Like, I mean, we have like peeps in our church have been sick for going on yeah. four and a half, five months now, multiple yeah. people, uh-huh. like your situation isn't blessed, but if you're coming out of this in a situation going towards like, man, I yearn for God's justice in the medical industry in the healthcare mm. industry. Why? Because for five months I've been dealing with this sickness and I, I, and I have benefits and I can't imagine what it would be like to not have benefits and be in this situation. Yeah. Yeah. So if that's, then, then like, then like that's where we want our hearts to get towards. Right. Uh-huh. So that's the part for us where I, I want to be like, not only is our church made up of these, but is my heart made up of such as these, like this, the, like that's the this status that like that one the a that god has has for me i can sit here as someone with cptsd with disordered eating with body dysmorphia with all the i can go through the list of all the stuff right i get to sit here and sit in a status of going i am blessed like god is sitting towards me and it's and i i'm picturing it as as like a teacher in a community circle right but like jesus is a teacher so he's on a tiny chair so that he can be on the same level as the kindergartners. And he's just looking at me and bent down and just like, man, you're here. Look, look, look at, look at your status in the chair towards me. I, I'm, I'm focused on you. 
Why? Yeah. Oh, because you are blessed. And because of your situation, though it sucks, look what's happened. It has turned you, it has turned your status to this, to where I'm sitting here right here waiting with just, just waiting to hang out with you. Like mm. that to me, I, 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 how do I ever get to hear that my situation is blessed, right? When I wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm not in it, that's it. I'm, I'm up for the day because uh, of the stuff, you know, because, because of, of everything going on. Like, I don't feel blessed then. You know, but now like I, I, I have a hope to remind myself, like, no, this situation isn't a blessing and no, God doesn't want that. And no, God didn't cause that to be. Um, and yes, I want God to heal that in me now, you know, and heal it in, in me in, in fuller and more, more fuller ways. But it, but this is the, and this leads us to the other part, because if this creates more dependence upon God, then what do I actually want? Because what if I yeah. actually find my life through my CPTSD because it creates dependent upon God where I'm just at the end of my rope going, God, I need you to help me through this day. And Jesus is like, yes, now I yeah. can work with you. Now we're yeah. here. Come and sit on my lap and let's go to town. Mm-hmm. I didn't want mm-hmm. it to take to this point. But I'm glad that we're here because now mm-hmm. we can move mm-hmm. forward. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Like, would I give that up? I always talk about like, oh man, would I live in China or would I live, would I, if I, if I knew that I would be a better follower of Jesus by living in, in North Korea. Like when I was a younger Christian, I, I was always like, heck yes, of course. Why wouldn't I, you know? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then I met someone uh, who like a year later was martyred by the Taliban in Afghanistan. And, and, and guess what? I didn't want to do so. I get my, my answer changed, you know, uh, but um, but we, but but that that's this question. And it's hard for us here living in the states um, and even in the impoverished in the states is so much better than so much of the poverty. In, in you know, I speak as someone that that has lived yeah. in poverty, you know, that, that has lived on food stamps and such and, and help. Yeah. Um, so so what I'd be oh, I have Christian? to ask a question. I have to ask a question just for those listeners that um like the, they may be tuning in now and, and hearing what you're saying and and going like but i'm there now paul like i i'm sick and tired of that i don't want that i don't want like i i feel that way but i don't feel blessed paul like did this happen overnight did you just like you prayed a prayer you said a thing and all of a sudden now you can look towards the this situation and and see where god is sitting next to you and going now i can work in your life dude no it's 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 this journey i mean i'm like i love the question because that's how i we all want it to be i I, who doesn't want the self-help i mean why does joel osteen have a stadium olsen why does joel osteen have a stadium olsen talk about word of faith why do (laughs) word of faith have stadiums Okay, well, because they're selling a product to people that would help hopefully improve their lives. And that's what it comes down to, you know. Um, it's what are you truly going after Jesus or are you going after the things you want from him? Like that's the whole, oh, whole I purpose love that. of it. Ray, how oh, you love talk that? about what happens mm. at the end of the road? Because Jesus goes, here's what yeah. you get at the end of the road. You get Jesus. And yeah. what if that's not enough? Because that's exactly yeah. what you just said. Also, like, like that's it. Right. Yeah, no, that that's it. Like that's the, the whole point. Um, that's what Jesus Jesus came to offer Himself, not offer us, uh, you know, like a solution to the happy family or a perfect life or riches and wealth. He came to offer Himself in the kingdom of God, which is going to be greater than anything we can ever imagine. But we just have to trust Him to work through His this process. And first of all in preparing our hearts to be ready for it and to receive it do you truly want it it comes back down to god being not a person who forces himself on anyone who truly loves us and loves people and you're not going to you know as much as you love your kids you're probably not going to strap them down to bed to make them go to sleep you know at some point Listen, maybe this is someone, someone, someone that doesn't have a kid it's I'm someone saying, who said, it's, 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 it's cross your mind, <laughs> cross my cross mind. mind. <laughs> first off jesus was swaddled, swaddled. seconds after he came out <laughs> why because we strap children down why so right. they'll go to sleep 
I'm not saying, I'm thinking more of like a child, <laughs> like a, a larger child that has more agency. Well, like my 14 year old <laughs> that wakes up at four o'clock in the morning and is ready to start his day. No, there is strapping that is happening. There is strapping, okay. <laughs> We say in oh, jest. Right. There's no actual strapping in jest. children in outside in of jest. swaddling. <laughs> outside of swaddling. But my point behind that is <laughs> that you know, uh, God is ultimately not trying to force Himself on anyone. He wants us to uh, be open into uh, just in a, in a loving relationship with Him, and just you don't have. <laughs> a loving relationship with someone if you're forcing yourself upon them or or trying to manipulate them to get your way vice versa if you're trying to manipulate god to get your way how much of a loving relationship is that with him like if you're only trying to get you know what you want things you desire the outcome the results you you want in your life then you're just using god as a means to an end and not the end of itself i love that i mean it's like it's a it's a question that question Ray is a great question. It is. It doesn't offer. Any, my answer to this isn't going to necessarily offer any immediate hope. Other than the immediate hope is, um, I I used to have lots of really 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 bad days with no hope of getting out of them, and, and now I have a lot less of them. And the days I do have, I have hope built into them. Why? It's not just because I prayed it away. It's partly because it, it's it's. I mean. It's because of my therapist. It's because of all the, the support network I put in, into myself, the the healing and emotional healing that God has done in me, the spiritual healing that God has done in me. So it's all those reasons. Um, but the the envelopness, right? That comes with the journey of being in a relationship with somebody over the course of, for me, since I was 23. And it really, for me, even earlier, because my parents prayed over me every night, you know, from when I was one day, you know, when I was born to, you know, when I was 18 or whatever, probably still now, I, I mean, yeah. you know, parent, I mean, when do you, when are you not praying for, for Devon Ray? So when are you going to mm-hmm. stop praying for Devon? <laughs> I'm not. I'm yeah. Not, I, you I, know? I couldn't like, why? No. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so with that, um, the, the, the journey is like saying, um, it, it's, it's like a marriage journey, like hopefully, prayerfully and i can say this now at you know when you and i don't love each other like we did in 2007 our love is so much deeper than it was in 2000 it's not even the same and it's because of how we have journeyed through life together guess what i've become a better communicator like you know what i mean i i've become more emotionally healthy uh and i become more mentally healthy and spiritually healthy well how much has that improved my relationship with god it's not only improved my communication with other people in my life and those whom I love in my life and those who I work and everything, but it's, it's so clearly changed my relationship with Jesus. Um, so uh, it is a part of it. It's not a prayer, you know, sit, pray and, and forget it type of deal. Um, but it's also, um, I mean, the, the hope, the, the hope I can speak to is, uh, man, like continuing to journey down this is the only way that, I, that you can possibly live a life that you were purpose and designed to live. This is the only way to live. So like the, 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 the mashing together or, or I, like the relationship uh, with the Holy Spirit in our lives uh, continues to evolve and mature and grow. And so that um, we grow into you know, living a life more like living a life that Jesus lived, loving, loving as Jesus loved, uh, living a life as Anthem. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, Jesus says to do so. So this isn't some like unlivable life. Like this, Mm, like, here's what he's saying. Like you, you can live a life without anger and, and bitterness and resentment. You can live a life of forgiveness and reconciliation. You can live a life where you don't have to, where, where, where prayer is, is something that, that is this um, mis- mysterious journey that you get to get, get, get to have a conversation with the immortal or, or sorry, with, with the eternal, you know, outside of time mm-hmm. and space, like this is all available here and now. And the angst of it is it's not the way it's all supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. We should be feeling that angst. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, like it's yeah. not the way it's supposed to be. And and yes, I, I, I'm not the way that's supposed to be, but I know that I will be. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and so I get to live in, in a community that lives in the hope of the rea- of a real a hope a hope based in the reality of a risen God. Right. Mm. So Anthem uh, do- values reconciliation and forgiveness. How do I know that? I've literally seen reconciliation take place on numerous levels. Mm. Like like I-, I know that. How do I know that serving is is important? Well, because we literally haven't gone a month without serving. Like how, mm. how do we how do I know that our living on our baptism is important? Because we have people of all cross-sectional political divides, financial classes, uh, social classes, um, uh, single status, divorced, married, remarried, divorced again. I mean, it, it, it is followers of Jesus and not followers of Jesus, you know? Yeah. Um, sorry, again, rabbit trail. Yeah. <laughs> so now- so as, we're, as we talk about all these things and we talk about life as anthem and we talk about um you know last week's sermon preparing for this next week and and this following series um who who do we invite because this is dangerous like you've said that in this last week's sermon you said this text is dangerous it it it, it, it's dangerous um so who do we invite who is this just for uh, uh those that follow follow god those that you know, have made that commitment, or is this for like who? Who's the who's the audience when we're talking about life as an? I had somebody, uh, or I I listened to somebody who asked this professor about the Sermon on the Mount and had said that it's for the it's of the law because God God Jesus gave it before he was crucified and resurrected, and now it's all grace. And uh, the professor said, well, if that's the case. Uh, then the disciples thought it was pretty relevant to how you how you follow and know Jesus uh, because Matthew wrote and Luke wrote this you know 30 plus 30 ish or so years after his death and resurrection um, so it applies I would invite uh, any uh, everybody and anybody because it, it speaks to the shallow and and the deep end uh, of our lives and and it's also uh, into your openness to it how open are you going to be you know and so um uh, I, I can remember somebody who came to Anthem once and they were here for a little bit and then they told me, I don't think that, um, that, that, uh, what was it? It was, um, I don't know if I fit in here. And what she was saying is, or what they were saying is, I don't know that everybody here fits in with me. Mm-hmm. And I get that. So if that's who you're concerned about, maybe this isn't the play this isn't made us in the series to invite that person not out of like judgment on them or anything but this all has to do with your open and willingness to you know in, in your heart and at the same time we also can't judge what's going on in someone's heart so how do i know if someone is open and willing in in, in this place or, or not here's what i need to be concerned with the plank in my own eye because mm-hmm. it's bigger than that person's whatever their whatever their thing is but the plank in my own eye is bigger than 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 the the speck in theirs. Mm. So I like Jesus isn't Jesus is speaking to people who are not followers of him, but he's inviting them in on the journey. So if you're yeah. a follower, you're invited on the journey. If you're not a yeah. follower, you're invited on the journey. And see if you want to be a part of it. And all the time, Jesus is like, if you don't want to be a part of it, no problem. It's okay. We're just going to continue journeying over here, and we'll be ready when you when you come on and be a part of it. It's okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, he sits in the yeah. crowds and he says, you, you have to eat my flesh and, and drink my blood. And there's people that starts leaving. He's like, I'm not kidding. You have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And then he looks at, at some of his disciples who are still there. They're like, are you guys peaced out too? Because everybody else left. And they're like, we have nowhere else to go. We, we just gave <laughs> up. We made a terrible decision and we're kind of here. Yeah. So, so we're kind of here now. And he's like, great. That's the sort of people I, I need. Excellent. We're on the journey together. Yeah. Uh, so that's who I would invite to life as Anthem. Excellent. Hey, uh, everyone listening at home, whether it's in your car, whether you're watching this on YouTube, thank you Mm -hmm. so much for tuning in. If you have any questions for pastor Paul, myself, or pastor Chris, uh, feel free to email or text them in. You'll see that information in the description below. Um, as always guys, 
Uh, thanks for the conversation. Love it. You guys have a good rest yeah. of the day, man. All right. Next week, good. salt uh, of the earth, light of the world, and we will not yeah. have to share our faith. It's going to be awesome. So <laughs> <That was good. laughs> no awkward conversations. <laughs> yeah. awesome. No, no, no tulips or flowers that you have to remember. <laughs> That's for the very niche audience here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We truly hope you enjoyed this episode of At The Speed of Life. Again, should you have any questions or topics you'd love for us to discuss, email us at anthemray at gmail.com. That's A-N-T-H-E-M-R-A-Y at gmail.com. Thanks again. And may the words of Jesus Christ forever be on your minds, on your lips, and in your hearts.